Hello and welcome again to one of the tutorials on AFM at the Lens Lab. Uh, this is Sergi again speaking. What I'll do in this tutorial is explain uh, how to get a hammock map uh, from a standard raw images in atomic force microscopy. Uh, basically we will have images in amplitude, this is a standard amplitude image. I just clicked on the image in MATLAB let's wait for it to open so we have amplitude 1 amplitude 2 we also have phase 1 and phase 2 because this is a bimodal image in a previous tutorial I explained already how to take uh, attractive bimodal images where you get the amplitude 1, amplitude 2, phase 1 and phase 2 so in this tutorial I assume that you already have acquired these images and you've saved them as raw images in amplitude, this is a matrix with 3 nanometers of amplitude 1, amplitude 2, so this actually is uh, amplitude in volts, so we give it in volts because we need to do the conversion, so make sure that this is in volts, the raw data for, for amplitude 2, so this would be actually 13 millivolts, 14 millivolts and the software that I'm going to use now will actually convert these 13 millivolts of amplitude 2 into, into nanometers so make sure that you keep your amplitude in volts then we have the height image in meters as well sorry about that because this was actually uh, meters so it's 3.0 to the minus 9 so this is actually meters so this phase 1 as we can see it's above 90 so it's attractive and this phase 2, which is also above 90, which is what it should be because this is standard attractive bimodal imaging. So, okay, so once we have these four um, pieces of data in text format, as I explained in the previous uh, tutorial, all we need to do is copy them in, the, in this folder, in the folder called bimodal, I'll check here, by model Hamaka closed form, inside you find data images, so we copy them here, A1, A2, H, P1 and P2, and then we just click by model. So that's it. So once you click by model, theory 2015, December 15, so this is the current version of the software. One of the things that I haven't done yet that we should do is to make a nice uh, interface for you to change the parameters but for now you need to do it manually so it's very easy to make in MATLAB though uh, an interface in any case all we need to do is make sure that we have the correct amplitude involved, involved. this is in line 15 of the MATLAB code so amplitude involved in this case was 53 to the minus 9 amplitude 2 was divided by the sensitivity that's why I'm saying that amplitude 2 should be in volts this because of the way in which uh, the AFM actually uh, gives the raw signal amplitude 1 voltage converts into meters in a different way than mode 2 so it needs to be the voltage should be divided by sensitive mode 2 which we've chosen to be 3.473 according to most of the literature of AFM so then what we need to do is select the free amplitude free amplitude of mode 1 in volt, free amplitude of mode 2 in volt, in this case it was 0.11 volts, free amplitude of mode 2, which was 0.022 volts, and we need to check the spring constant of mode 1, the Q factor of mode 1, spring constant of mode 2, Q factor of mode 2. So you need to change manually this to the actual parameters that you've, uh, you've acquired during the experiment. And once you change that, all you need to do is run, run the code. As long as the raw data is inside this folder here, everything should be fine. So let's run the code and let's see what happens to that raw data. So when I run it, it asks me to to select the folder where I have my raw data, which is data images in this case, I press select. So now what's happening is that we're getting uh, the transforms 
that we should be getting uh, in this case for uh, for a DNA molecule. This was about 120 nanometers, if I remember correctly, 129, 129, uh, 20, sorry, nanometers. The reason why you get zero to 250 is because this is actually the pixels that you get in the image, 250 by 250. Uh, actually, it's 256, because in uh, standard AFMs, normally you can choose powers of two for pixels. So this is the DNA image, and now what's happening is MATLAB is calculating uh, the Hamaker parameter. So what I'll do while it's calculating, because it might take a while, uh, let's open another clean folder in Google. So if you put uh, rapid uh, by, mo by model uh, mapping two nanometers, hopefully we get the right paper with this. Yes, so this is actually it, this is the, the other paper, so we'll open it for now. So if we open this link, what we get, hopefully, is the link of the paper that where this algorithm that I will discuss now is explained. This was published in uh, Nanoscale, it, it was published in 2016, uh, volume 8, page 9688. So the authors were Alice, uh, Saverio, myself, Ricardo Garcia, and Matteo. So you've got the abstract here, and you can open up this paper and find out about uh, what we've actually done and what I will explain in this uh, tutorial. Uh, in the abstract, however, you can already see that what we want is a map of the Hamaker constant. So let's see if we can understand what is Hamaker constant is, let's check in Wikipedia to give a brief idea, let's check if this is finished already, it's not finished so we can keep talking about this, so how like a constant, let's click on Wikipedia just to have a brief idea for people that are new to, to this, so the Hamaker like constant A, we call it H in AFM because A normally stands for amplitude, so we call it H for Hamaker rather than A, the original paper gave it A but we call it H. So the Hamaker constant A can be defined for a Van der Waals body-body interaction. So basically Hamaker is pi squared times C, which is a constant, density one, density two. And density one and two are the number of atoms per unit volume of the two interacting bodies. And C is the coefficient in the particle-particle pair interaction. Actually, this is the power law for Van der Waals, and we see that the coefficient is C. So from this straightforward definition, we see that if we map the Hamaker, we'll get a map of, uh, sorry, I just clicked on Atom. So we'll get a map of how strongly, because of C, the atoms on the tip of the AFM interact with the atoms on the surface because of C, which is the coefficient of strength of this Van der Waals interaction and also proportional to the density of atoms on the tip and the density of atoms on the surface. So because the density of atoms depends on the actual chemical and the strength of this uh, interaction also depends on the chemical, the Hamaker map will give us, hopefully, a Van der Waals map. So I think it's finished already, yes. So as we can see, it's taken 65536, which is exactly 256 times 256. Sorry, 256. Yes, so this is actually the pixel, so it had to calculate the Hamaker for each pixel. And when it finishes, even though we started here with the bimodal theory uh, code, when it finishes, all the data will be found inside the folder data images and inside the process uh, process data folder. So now we have the amplitude one, amplitude two, D min. This actually is something that we leave there, but it's not uh, relevant here. D min full. So we're interested in D min full. I'll click on it. So D min full actually is a map of the DNA molecule. This is the DNA molecule here. This is the map about 120 nanometers by 120. And what D mean is, is the minimum distance of approach per 
pixel. In other words, how close was the, the tip to the surface when it was tapping the surface. If we want to know numerically about this, we can go in the code and take new dim in full. We can take this guy. We can put we can make a new figure, say figure 100, and we can create a histogram. So we can do a histogram, we put the new dim in, we turn it into a vector, and we say make 100 uh, columns. So let's see. So this is the actual distribution, as we can see, is to the power of 10, so this means about 0 0.4 nanometers, was the average minimum tip sample distance for this image that implies that we were actually in the attractive mode and uh, we don't see here a bimodal distribution by model because we have two substances we have here the, the DNA and we have the substrate however because the DNA was so small in ratio compared to the substrate in the actual bimodal image for the histogram in the, bio, in the histogram we don't see bimodal distribution we see only one mode but in the image, we can actually distinguish clearly that there is something here. And because it's darker, it's lower. So basically, these lower points here, about three, 0 0.3 nanometers, should be the minimum distance of approach for DNA. And this means should be for the substrate. In this case, the substrate is this one, which is mica. So here we were typing, tapping at about 0 0.4 nanometers. Here we were tapping at about 0 0.3 nanometers in the DNA model. So this is the explanation of the dimming uh, figure. We can also go on the E1 figure, so let's click on it. So what the E1 figure is, is the energy transfer from mode 1 to higher modes. So basically we also see here a map, but it's not very easy to distinguish the molecule in terms of contrast, but we still see something here, so uh, sort of the shape of the molecule. We can also get numerical results for this. All we need to do is go here and take E mode one, do exactly the same thing as we did before. So I just change the vector and let's see. So this is actually the, the histogram for the energy transfer. We see that the energy transfer on average was zero. So, on average, we were transferring zero electron volt. It's actually the units of this electron volt. So, E2, let's click on E2, see what we get. Okay, so this is much more interesting. So, this is the, the DNA molecule that we see very clearly here, and we see actually features inside the DNA molecule. So, this is actually the E2 is the energy transfer from the second mode. Why did we get higher contrast in the second mode than in the first mode? One of the explanations is because in the first mode we were oscillating with, if we recall, 0 0.1 volt. In the second mode we were oscillating with 0 0.02 volt. So this approximately was about 10 nanometers, say 5 to 10, it doesn't really matter. This was less than 1 nanometer. So if you transfer 1 electron, electron volt from something that's oscillating at 1 nanometer, you will feel it because uh, 1 electron volt from 1 nanometer oscillation is a very large ratio in terms of energy for that mode. Let's actually calculate the energy of this mode more or less so the energy is about one more or less so the energy is about one half times the times the spring constant in this case it was uh, 75 75 times the amplitude squared amplitude squared squared was about 0 0.022 so say 0 0.022 times 0 0.022 because this is squared so it's one half spring constant amplitude squared that's uh, the simplified form of the kinetic energy of the, of the oscillator of the second mode 
and now we need to convert to uh, well we don't need to convert just in in terms of uh, well we don't need to convert just in in terms of uh, of, of comparing with the first mode uh, but voltage wise we know that it was 3.475 divide 3.475 if now we want to convert to joules, all we need to do is multiply times 1 to the minus 18 to get into joules. But this should be the energy with amplitude in volts. And for the first mode, the energy was, this was 2, and this was 1, more or less, right? Uh, 1, 1, and 1, and we can get rid of the 3, 4, 4, because this is for the second mode. So in terms of volts, the energy for the first mode was 0, 0, 0.01. 0 .01. The energy for the second mode was 0 0.01. So it was an order of magnitude less. This explains why in this image, the second mode, even though probably we were transferring the same amount of energy, we can actually check the energy we were transferring. Mode two. Okay, let's get it here. Uh, let's do another figure, figure 101. And let's create another histogram. So histogram for the second mode here. So let's check. So yeah, it was also close to zero, actually it was positive in this case, but very close to zero electron volts. Actually, 0 0.3 electron volts was the energy transferred in the, in the second mode, on average. Uh, so it's very little. That's why uh, we would expect the contrast also to be negligible. The reason, however, because the oscillation amplitudes that we were oscillating at in the second mode were so small that 0 0.2 electron volts were actually quite a lot compared to the kinetic energy of oscillation. So that's one of the explanations. We can also check the energy dissipation uh, image, which is just here. We also see contrast for the DNA molecule. We can check the actual numerical values of this. Again, it's the same thing. This is the actual vector that contains the information. So this is the energy dissipation, which is about 0 0.3 electron volts, again. So very similar to second mode. Let's see if I did it correctly. Let's close everything else so we don't confuse the, the data. Okay, so here you go. So it's 0 0.3 electron volts, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 on average. Uh, the energy dissipation, by the way, is the actual energy that dissipated to the surface. And it's not energy that transferred between modes, it's the actual energy dissipation. Uh, we can see equation 11 for energy mode 2 equation 11 is explained on the paper here so if you download this paper you will see the equ equation 11 actually it's not equation 11 in this paper actually it's in another one which is um, uh, it was explained in uh, multiple operation regimes by model. So let's see if we can download this paper and I show you. Uh, phase contrast operation regime. So this is the one. So okay, so you can download this paper directly from UPC. And let's check equation 11. So this is equation 11 explained here. By the way, uh, energy transfer is also given here. So this is the energy transfer from mode to mode as I was explaining before, the ones we've actually seen, this is energy dissipation, we've also seen, and this is energy equation 11, so let's give a look at the image. So this is the image, it's, there's actually quite a lot of contrast here, so that's why this equation might be very relevant for many people, because they might like the contrast. This actually is the energy transfer from the mode times the Q factor divided 2 pi n, so actually it's proportional to the energy transfer for mode N, which is actually, in this case, the second mode. So it's actually proportional 
to this one so they should be the same just in different units this and that so these two the reason why uh, this equation even though its proportion might be might be of interest is because we can add the kinetic energy plus this expression and get the actual energy transfer and the kinetic energy is a very interesting term in my model as we will see by looking here let's look at the kinetic energy so here you go so this is the kinetic energy as i was saying uh, typically it gives very good contrast and this has got a very simple explanation kinetic energy is one half k amplitude squared so because of what i was saying before that the oscillation amplitude of the second mode is so small any small transfer of energy between the second mode and the first mode will be felt by the second mode very strongly because the kinetic energy equals the energy transfer minus this term here so it's actually related to the energy transfer so that's why kinetic energy is a uh, typically giving very high contrast when it's, uh, there's energy transfer in the mode. So we can also look at other uh, expressions here, for example, uh, height recovered difference. Height recovered difference is recreated, so this is basically the difference in height relative to the actual height that you looked, this is actually the raw image, so it's not even uh, flattened, so you don't actually see the, the actual height you need to look at the real image to see the height but uh, in this one in this uh, actual uh, figure what you see is the difference in height from what you actually record from the AFM minus what you actually lose from the AFM why do you lose because if there's different chemistry on the sample you will also lose or gain height as explained in this paper here already that I discussed before. So this is the actual paper. Nanoscale, rapid, rapid quantitative, quantitative chemical mapping of surfaces. Uh, the height loss is explained here. Also, if you want more information on height loss, you can look at our paper called Intrinsic Resolution Limit AFM height is a plus one uh, it's here so you just need to click on it plus one so if you want to know anything about height loss you can look at it you, you can actually read this paper and it, and it will explain why because of chemistry differences you might actually lose height this is uh, one interested interesting image or figure that says that you're not looking only at the DNA molecule, but you're only also looking at the substrate. So you're averaging. Uh, then you, well, this is another figure that shows you the same thing, that you get height from here, but you also get height from here, and you get height from here. So you get height from, uh, from the full surface. And uh, if you want more information, you, you can just read that paper. It's quite interesting for height. And then finally, we want to look at another two expressions. We want to look at the FTS derivative, this guy. So basically, this figure gives you the average derivative in the derivative of the force. This expression is also probably given here. Maybe not, but basically it's very simple it's just uh, the derivative of the force so if this is the tip sample force you derive this per cycle and the result is this thing which is related to the chemistry so we expect to see the dna molecule in a in a figure giving contrast for the derivative of the force you can also find uh, information on this paper on this paper here and uh, finally we'll go to the last figure which is the Hamaker which is the one we were discussing from the very beginning 
and this is the Hamaker map of the DNA molecule. It's darker on the DNA because the DNA should have lower Hamaker, DNA silicon tip should have lower Hamaker or lower affinity than the mica silicon tip. So that's why this is darker here. You can check the actual values of the hammocker by looking at the vector H1 D mean full. So we can do a histogram now. Let's see. This is the histogram. Actually, I could see, I would say that this is the DNA molecule, lower hammocker, and this is the, this is the actually uh, mic, the actual mic. So it's given in 2.5 to the minus 20. This is in joules. Hamaka is given in joules. If we go to Wikipedia, uh, here for Hamaka, you will notice that this actually gives joules. Uh, you can actually also download the paper of Hamaka here. This was written in 1937, but still useful. Uh, the Lifshitz theory, as, as explained here, gives a more detailed and more advanced account of the Hamaka expression. And that's it. That's all you need to know to get hammocker maps. So this is the hammocker map. And this is the histogram of the image. And hopefully that was uh, enough for you to be able to get maps, hammocker maps, and all the maps of your data acquired with bimodal AFM in, a, in the attractive mode. Thank you very much.